So protests continue in Minnesota following the death of Dante Wright at the hands of law enforcement. So as the family is laying Dante to rest today, more details have emerged about the incident. And we are going to go through and look at each of those details in today's episode. I'm Joshua Roberts, attorney at law, and you are watching Lawyer Up. In today's episode, we're going to look in detail at the Dante Wright incident. Now, what I have done is I got the information from the prosecuting attorney. I've looked at NBC, CBS, ABC, and Fox, and I've looked at their summaries of the events. I've also looked at the New York Times and the Washington Post. I've looked at all of those various summaries of these events. And I've also did a little extra digging myself into the Minnesota court records to fill in some gaps of information that the media has not provided to you guys. So we're going to talk about all of those things in today's episode. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And recall that if you don't want me in your eye, you'd rather have me in your ear, we're available on all major podcast formats. So let's get right to it. And to catch you up, former Brooklyn Center, Minnesota police officer Kimberly Potter has been charged with second-degree manslaughter in the death of Dante Wright, a 20-year-old black man, after killing him with a single shot from her Glock 9mm handgun. Potter, who is aged 48, is or was a 26-year veteran of the department. She joined the Brooklyn Center Police Force in 1995. She resigned two days after the shooting, and she was actually charged and booked into the county jail that same day. She's been since released after posting a $100,000 bond. Now, the police officials have blamed the death on human error as Potter meant to shoot her taser and not her firearm. But specifically, here is what happened that day. Officer Kimberly Potter was training Brooklyn Center Officer Anthony Lucky when they pulled over a white Buick at 1.53 p.m. on Sunday, April 11th of 2021. They pulled this vehicle over for having expired tags and a car air freshener hanging from the rear view mirror, which apparently is illegal in Minnesota. Now, Officer Lucky identified the driver as Dante Wright, and while doing a records check, discovered a warrant for a gross misdemeanor weapons charge, gross meaning major misdemeanor. And so here is the backstory that mainstream media is kind of leaving out. This warrant was issued on April 2nd, and according to court records, it was issued after Wright had failed to make a court appearance on the charge of carrying a pistol without a permit, which was the gross misdemeanor, and for fleeing from the police, which is also a misdemeanor. Now, these charges stemmed from a June 30th incident where Wright had exited the backseat of a car where a handgun was later found, and he also ran from the police that day. He actually fled successfully, evading officers, but police said they were able to identify Wright from prior interactions. So what were those prior interactions, you ask? Well, that is a good question, and that sent me digging a little further into the Minnesota court records. Now, this prior interaction included a first-degree aggravated robbery case that was scheduled for trial in August of this year, where Wright was accused of pointing a gun at a woman, choking her, and attempting to steal $820 from her. Now, he pled not guilty to those charges, and so they were never established in a court of law. So, Here's the significance. As the officers reapproached the vehicle after learning about the warrant, they knew that the warrant was for a weapons charge, right, on the gun. They also knew it was for a charge of fleeing from police. So they probably were a little bit on edge. Now, it's not entirely clear if they knew about the other aggravated robbery charge that was pending, but as they were approaching the car, we know at least they knew that a weapon could be in play. So 
Here's what happens as Officer Lucky approaches. He asks Dante Wright to step out of the vehicle, which Dante did, and to place his hands behind his back, which Dante did. Officer Lucky then told Wright that he was being arrested because of the outstanding warrant. So as Dante was being cuffed, he wrangled away from Officer Lucky and got back into the driver's seat of his car with Lucky kind of holding on to him. Six seconds later, Officer Potter said she would hit Wright with a taser. But, and I quote this from the prosecutor's file, presented her department-issued Glock 9mm handgun in her right hand and pointed it at the victim. Potter said, I'll tase you, I'll tase you. And then she said, taser, 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 which is a standard warning which is required by the department as protocol prior to using a taser. Now, the struggle in the driver's seat continued and Officer Potter fired one second later, immediately saying, holy shit, I just shot him. And then Wright says, oh, he shot me. He said he, even though it was a she, and the car sped away, and it crashed into another vehicle a short distance down the road, and Wright was later pronounced dead at the scene. Now, in review of the entire tape, it looks as though Potter fired her gun 12 seconds after Wright had pulled himself free from the other officer. Now, the Bureau of Criminal Apprehension, they examined Potter's duty belt and saw that her handgun had been holstered on the right side and that her taser had been holstered on the left side. Now, the taser was a yellow taser with black grip, and it was holstered in a straight draw position. And that means that the handle was facing the rear. So Potter would use her left hand to draw her taser. The Glock was gray, and it was also holstered in a straight draw position, meaning that the handle was facing the rear. And so she would have drawn with her right hand to draw her duty weapon. And so in the configuration she was wearing these two weapons, They both were in the straight draw position with the handles facing the rear. Now, the opposite of that, or a different way of thinking about it, is the cross draw configuration. In the straight draw, you draw straight from your sides. In the cross draw, you reach across your body and you reach for the weapon that's on the other side, opposite the hand you're reaching with. And the cross draw scenario is different because the handles of the guns will be facing the front so that you can actually access them, right? It would be difficult if they were handles were facing the rear to cross draw and grab them. So people like to squabble about which configuration is better, but ultimately it just comes down to personal preference. Now this Potter Wright case is at least the 16th in the United States in which a police officer has shot someone that they intended to tase. And in nine of those cases, there were no criminal charges filed at all, just chalked up as an accident. Now, I personally have actually handled one of those 16 cases, and it was one of the seven cases where charges were actually filed against the officer. Now, I didn't prosecute. I handled the civil portion of the claim, and it was against the city and police department back in 2014. So what had happened was my client was panhandling in Springfield, Missouri, when an officer who knew him from prior interactions uh, and knew that he had a warrant out for his arrest approached him. So my client also knew he had a warrant out, ran. The officer gave chase, and he meant to fire his taser, but he mistakenly shot him with his duty weapon striking my client in the butt as he ran away. Now, obviously, this was less serious than the right case because my client didn't die. I mean, he was shot in the butt. Uh, But at the end of the day, it netted him $700,000. But that case is a story for another video. But I just share that with you because I've had experience dealing with this exact scenario and this exact situation. So let's switch back to the Potter case. Now, the second-degree manslaughter charges, they carry a maximum sentence of 10 years in prison. The guideline sentence range for an offender with no criminal history is four and a half years, and we know that this officer doesn't have any criminal history. And a defendant found guilty of those charges, they're still eligible for straight probation, even if given a prison sentence. So that's an interesting uh, twist to this particular scenario. Now, attorney Ben Crump, 
who said he has been retained by Wright's family, said, quote, driving while black continues to result in a death sentence. A 26-year-old veteran of the force knows the difference between a taser and a firearm, which is interesting. The manufacturer of the taser that Potter was using that day made a statement that they now design tasers with a grip, trigger, and safety to feel different than a handgun. And the quote was that in a normal situation without stress or adrenaline, there is no way you can be confused. But they also went on to say that sometimes other factors creep in. So since the date of the shooting, protests have taken place near Officer Potter's house, where she lived with her husband, who was also in law enforcement. Now, they moved out of the house. In fact, they moved out the day following the incident, and local police have put up barricades around their house, and they maintain a 24-hour presence at that home. A lot of the neighbors have stated that they have been forced to leave. They said that possibility of protest and potential gunplay and having tear gas just waft through their house at all hours of the days was just more than they could stand. And obviously, I don't blame them. So that is the episode. That is what happened from the perspective of a lot of different sources. We understand that it probably was an accident, and they were probably a little bit on edge as they approached the right vehicle that day. I hope you have learned something from this episode. Hit that like button if you have. If you got something to say, you got a question, put it in the comment section below. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, do so now so that you can keep up with all types of current events and legal happenings from around the country. And you know what's coming next. I love it, guys, when you share me on social media. Again, my name is Joshua Roberts, attorney at law, and you've been watching Lawyer Up. Send lawyers, guns, and money.